Hello, Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if this is your first time stopping by. Today we are doing another recent deck roundup. I freaking love making these videos. I look forward to them every month because it's like opening presents every month and it's amazing. And I actually do have a couple pieces of happy mail as well as a couple things that were sent to me for review as well as a couple things that I bought and or backed on Kickstarter. So without further ado, let's get into it. First of all, just a reminder in case you didn't already know, my book Unlocking the Tarot, Create Your Own Keys is coming out in the US October 8th. Check your local Amazon country website to see when it's coming out where you're located. But I know in the US it's set to drop October 8th and I'm so super excited about this. I've talked about it a bunch in other videos so I won't belabor the point, but this is coming out and I'm so, so excited. And also for those of you who backed the Unicorn's Journey Tarot on Kickstarter, this is the, the prototype box. It's changed just a little bit for the final version, but these are almost done at the printer. And I think when this video comes out, cross fingers, the decks are going to be shipping from the printer to my fulfillment center. So we're very, 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 very close. And I'm really excited. I had a, actually the day that I'm filming this, uh, Peggy and I had a meeting with the fulfillment center that I'm using and kind of went over everything. And I'm just, I'm so over the moon. So if you've been waiting for this, it's coming very soon. If you did not back it on Kickstarter and you're waiting for it to show up on Etsy, we're hoping to have that happen by the end of the year. I will keep you posted. I really wanna take care of the Kickstarter first. And also in case you're out of the loop, Peggy and I are working on another deck that we're hoping to get out onto Kickstarter like as soon as these have shipped. We're hoping to get the other deck on Kickstarter. It is the Sassy Dragons Tarot. Make sure you're subscribed to my newsletter or check the Supportive Tarot Facebook group or my community tab to see a little teaser about Sassy Dragons Tarot, but we are very, very excited about it. It is a really fun, really sassy deck and there will be a classic edition and a not safe for work edition and I cannot freaking wait for you all to see it. I've been keeping it mostly under wraps but we're going to be rolling out art previews very 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 soon so keep your eyes peeled on all the social media things and as soon as I have a prototype of that you know I will bring it here and I'll share it with you guys so stay tuned. And that probably concludes our announcements. Let's get into the decks. So I have no particular order but I did receive a little prototype of a deck that is due to hit Kickstarter. So let's get into this one first. Oh, if I can just get into it. I've got two opening devices today. I have a box knife and I have a seam ripper. And I think I'm gonna try the seam ripper first because there is a spot lifted away from the cards. This is just a sample of the deck because it's a prototype. So this is, I think, just the majors and the minors will be fully illustrated or scenic. I did ask them, oh my God, these backs are so stinking cute. So this is the Chibi Tarot, and this is by the same creators who did the Baroque Tarot. I did share the Baroque, oh my God, it matches my table. Are you kidding? I just noticed. I bet all of you were screaming because you noticed it right away. Um, this is the cutest. I was not expecting it to be matte. Wait a minute, I was not expecting it to be linen. Hello. Ooh, this is nice. This is like a good, like, bendy, shuffleable linen. Ooh, that's exciting. I did not know that. Okay, let's see what it says here. So Mustafa, the Chibi Tarot. Yeah, some design elements such as the back design are subject to change by the time we launch on Kickstarter. So as always with prototypes, these are usually just what, what they're playing with at the time that they printed this. So, but it is gilt or gold foil edged. Let's just take a quick look at the Major Arcana. Oh my God, this is so stinking cute. I cannot, I love the blue hair. Oh, it's a Rider Waite Smith clone, but it is really stinking adorable. I love the chibi eyes. They just are so cute. <gasps> look at the High Priestess. Oh my God. They got the symbols. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Am I petty? Yeah, I, I can't help it. Emperor, okay, I am already obsessed with this. Oh my goodness, look at them. Oh, they're so cute. Okay, oh, the little horses. <gasps> oh my word. This is stinking adorable. I love the colors. I love how easy it is to spot the symbols. Like if you're looking for a deck where it's really easy to just immediately spot the salient things on the card, this is fantastic for that. <gasps> oh, they did such a good job. Okay, I cannot wait for the entire thing. Oh my goodness. Oh, I love the rainbow. I, I'm loving the colors. Oh man, this is so cute. The way they're crying as they fall out of the tower. That's amazing. Okay, I am digging this. Oh, I love, oh, he's, he's clothed though. 
We don't have a naked kid. What the heck, man? <laughs> I don't mind. This is really stinking cute. And now I have a little majors only. Oh my gosh. I don't use majors only. I need the full deck. What is happening? Okay, Mustafa, get this out really quick. Okay. It looks like they're planning to launch the Kickstarter around October-ish. Yeah, it looks like around October-ish. I'm so excited. I'm like, I'm so excited about this. <laughs> I don't remember them telling me it was gonna be Landon, but I have to go over their email again. In any case, this is definitely worth checking out if you like adorable decks. Like, I don't know what else to say. It's super dang cute. It's super cute. Like, I kind of hope the back design stays pretty close to this though, because I, I love the back design as well. Look at it. It matches my table though. I'm gonna get a new quilt actually for my table soon. I think I'm bugging Peggy about it cause I'm ready for a new backdrop and I just love this full, this table quilt. But anyways, okay, babbling, enough enough about that. I'm just really excited about it. That's the Chibi Tarot. Keep your eyes out for that one. The next one is a deck that I backed on Kickstarter. Look, I, I clipped all the paraphernalia together so I wouldn't lose track of it because I am notorious for what I do when these decks come in is I put them in a drawer until it's time to talk about them in my recent deck roundup. But in any case, this is the Magical Creatures Tarot First Edition. This is by the creator of the Northern Animal Tarot. Look at the, look at the stickers that came with it. I think these are stickers. Yeah, I'm pretty sure these are stickers. And then this is also a sticker. And then we have a sample card. This is from Northern Animal Tarot. It's like not got rounded corners, but that's a little sample. And then we have a little thank you card. Amazing. I did not know, by the way, I was watching, I'm subscribed or not subscribed. I follow this creator on Instagram and I'm, y'all, I'm really terrible about Instagram. I gotta admit, I'm not, I don't hang out there. <laughs> like, I don't know the deal. But anyways, I did not realize she hand, like she prints these herself. She does them, she does them herself. She prints the design. Like, it's like a, I guess it's like a, I guess, I don't know, is it stamping? What do you call it? It's really cool though. So this is all done herself. I just thought, I, I commented on the Instagram. I was like, I had no idea you did these herself. And there was also a special stamped bag or, or printed bag for the Northern Animal Tarot. The Northern Animal didn't end up working out for me because it, it just clashed with other things that I had or it kind of like filled the same space as other things I had. Okay, now I need to get in here without, oh, I'm so bad with freaking tuck boxes. I just want to kind of jimmy it up and my nails are wet too. So, well, they're not that wet, but, oh, I got it. Look it. When you open the box from the bottom, there's a little dragon because I didn't want to break the seal. But look, if you can, I don't know if you can see, oh, I don't know if I can angle it so you can see. Do you see? There's a unicorn in the other side. So if you open the box from the other end, you get the unicorn. And if you open it from the bottom, you get a dragon. Like what a sweet, fun detail that is. I'm going to be putting this tuck box away somewhere safe because I don't typically keep decks in tuck boxes because I just end up tearing them. I'm guessing, I don't know which way is upright. Let's just check. Oh yeah. Okay. This is what I'm probably going to want to do a walkthrough of, but this is also got the same cardstock as the last edition of the Northern Animal. So it is a linen finish. It feels nice and flexible and bendy. This is going to shuffle really nice. Look at the unicorn and dragon on the back. Y'all knew I had to get this, right? Like this is, I've been obsessed. I've been watching this come to life on Instagram and I think it's the cutest stinking thing ever. Let's take a look through some of the cards. I can't, I mean, we'll, we'll have to do a quick, I'll have to do a walkthrough. I really want to see what's happening in judgment. Oh, I love this version of judgment with the Phoenix. Oh yes. Okay. We've got dragons through the wands. I really want to do a full walkthrough. We've got like mermaidy nymph creatures, water creatures. I shouldn't say nymphs. I don't know for sure. A little froggy, another mermaidy turtle. Oh my God. And then unicorns and the swords. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <gasps> Look at this one. Oh, oh, stabby unicorn. But it's still a really beautiful image. I love what they did with the colors here. And then for the coin suit, we have these like more earthy, like no me creatures. Y'all know I am here for this whole theme. <laughs> I'm sure you can imagine why. And then we also get a bunch of like Oracle cards as well. So this is the, this is the tarot, right? And then we also have all of these Oracles. So we have the golden egg, the wardrobe. I love this. This is Chronicles of Narnia all the way for me. The letter with the crow, traveling hat, cauldron. Oh my gosh. Okay. 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 I'm not going to spoil everything because I really want to do a full walkthrough. If you don't know the drill, by the way, when I do these videos where I show you all the things that have come in, I am counting on you to let me know what you want to see a walkthrough of. I'm probably going to want to do this one. But if you have any requests from anything I show here, be sure and let me know and I will go through things uh, in much more detail. Here we have the Magical Creatures Tarot Guidebook. Prints a bit small. I will need my reading glasses. It's actually quite readable. 
but it does feel pretty small. But looks like we get some pretty chunky entries for every card. That looks pretty substantial. So I'm really excited to get into that as well. I will probably keep this in its bag for now. And then we'll see where I end up. But I mean, it's so neat that she hand stamped that. So I think I'll keep it in its bag for now. Oh my gosh, I've got like piles of things everywhere. That's okay. All right, so let me get these things out of the way. Alrighty. Okay, next up is, what should I show next? Okay, let's show this next. I haven't even opened this. So this is a, a deck that was sent to my PO box. I, did, I knew this was coming after it was coming. I'm just gonna read the letter here. It looks like it's a hand-painted Lenormand deck and it will be available on Make Playing Cards. And there's something about card number four is going to be fixed. So let's take a look at this. Oh, I'm kind of hesitant. Like it's wrapped like a present. I freaking love this. Okay, I'm gonna use my little knife here to just cut the ribbon. Look at the little kitties. It's like confetti. Oh my God, oh my goodness. This one's like loose. So cute. Okay, and then I'm gonna use my seam ripper, I think. I have a paranoia about keeping box knives open, but I work, <laughs> I work in a shop, so, and the guys are just terrible for keeping like knives out just open. It makes me nuts. I'm like, what if somebody cuts themselves? I say probably because I'm accident prone. Okay, let's see Christine's little Lenormand deck. Christine, if you're watching this, comment down below with all the relevant information. You can't put a link because YouTube will filter that, but if you put what the name of the deck is gonna be in case it doesn't tell me, oh my gosh. Bunny Kisses! Bunny Kisses Furs Class. Bunny Kisses Lenormand. Oh my God. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Okay, let's take a look. So if you don't know what she's talking about, my I'm doing a Let's Learn Lenormand Together series where I'll be doing a video a month and we'll be, we'll be learning the Lenormand together. I am not a Lenormand teacher. <laughs> I'm trying to be clear. I am not a Lenormand expert. I am just like, I'm kind of a, a super beginner. Like I'm a forever beginner when it comes to Lenormand. But... I definitely am excited to kind of learn with you guys and kind of revisit the little bits that I do know and see if I can deepen my knowledge and then we can do it together. So is this the backs of the cards? Yeah, so the backs of the cards says Bunny Kisses Lenormand and that's what that looks like. And for the front, it's all hand painted. Look at this. Oh, okay, this is what she meant. Okay, so she said she's gonna fix card four because the number is covering up the title. So the number is gonna get moved somewhere else. So you do have the Playing Card Association printed on the card. And then you have the title of the card on there as well as the number and then the image. This is really great. Oh, this is fun. I think she must, I think she told me about this before and I don't know, I don't acquire a lot of Lenormand decks because I just find that they kind of tend to function similarly for me, but this is really fun. It's very quirky, I like that. There must be a bunch of extra cards though because I feel like there's more than 36. Let's get to the end. Okay, okay, okay. So then we have some information cards. All right, and little keywords. Fun, 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 and then a couple blank cards. Okay, 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 this is fun. So I'll set this aside and then take a look at it in more detail. What do we have for the people cards? So we have man, man, but they are facing the same direction. And then we have lady, lady. So I feel like one thing that's handy, if you're gonna have multiple significators, and this will come up later, it's handy if you're gonna have two men to have them each facing Two different directions so that way if you've got a, ma a male querent reading for another male querent they can face each other because traditionally in the lenormand you'll see the man and the lady always face each other right so you can kind of see what's between them i don't know how much that actually matters lenormand readers might be able to like more experienced lenormand readers might be able to weigh in in the comments but i still like that we have two of each to play with which is great and then yeah look at all these colors so fun so thank you so much for sending that over bunny kisses and that is the Bunny Kisses Lenormand. So keep an eye out for that. It sounds like it's gonna be showing up on Make Playing Cards. Okay, <laughs> I'm really excited, can you tell? My little scarab came off of here, but this is the scarab and Dahlia. And there's all these like, I couldn't even, I didn't even open it. Usually I'll open them and like check them before I bring them on camera. I tried to even reattach this little stone scarab onto the package. It was just so beautifully packaged. I just really wanted to show you all. I'm gonna put that there. This is like a little wax, melted wax seal. So we have some stickers. This is a collage deck and y'all, I'm really picky about collage decks, but the more I saw of this, the more I started to really like it. This has got like a holographic situation going on. That's kind of cool. So we have some stickers, put those there. Oh, it's another like opening a present. Oh, I wonder if I can, can I, oh, I can untie this one. Rescue the ribbon. Alrighty. 
Okay, again, I'm gonna use my seam ripper just so I don't mess up my nails, just to kind of pry. Oh, I guess I didn't really need to do that much. I'm gonna keep that handy because I think we've got some plastic wrap to deal with. So this is the Scarab and Dahlia. This is such an interesting deck and I'm so stoked to get into this. It's kind of funny, when I first saw this, I think it was the Ace of Wands that threw me because I was like, listen, there's a story, okay? So I got the She-Wolf Tarot, as some of you may know. I did eventually cave and get the She-Wolf Tarot even though it didn't win a say yes to the deck and I just, I knew better. But listen, my friends liked it and then I wanted to like it. Y'all know how it goes, right? So I got it, it didn't work out. And one of the things that bugged me is there was just like, I feel like there was one card where there was like cows everywhere or there were cows flying or something. And I remember thinking it was just so silly and I didn't get it. And when I saw the preview for this deck, the first thing I noticed is that the Ace of Wands has some like, I thought it was flying cows again. And I was like, nope, we're not doing that again. We're not doing the flying cows thing again. We did that before, we regretted it. <laughs> we're not doing it again. And that's, they're not even cows, y'all. I just, it was one of those things, you know, like you you rush to assumptions and that's what happens. Anyways, Scarab and Dahlia, a tarot deck by Johanna Gallahan Waldo, designed by Octavia Lucart Waldo. So this, like I said, is a collage deck. What a nice back of the box. The box design's really good. I notice all this stuff now, yo, because let me tell you, packaging, it's a whole thing. Okay, let's get into this. This is another one that I'm probably gonna wanna do a full walkthrough of, but again, keep me posted on what you wanna see. So first off, we have a nice guidebook. This font seems pretty easy to read. It seems small. I do have to say, just personal personal taste. I found that serif, if you're gonna have a really small font, serif fonts, which is the fonts that have the little, the little doohickeys on the letters, like they're not smooth, they've got the little doohickeys, you know, the doohickeys. <laughs> I'm sure there's a technical term. Well, they're called serifs, but anyways, those fonts, okay, like this, the title here, this is a serif font. And then the text here is a sans serif font, so it doesn't have serifs, but the titles do. Like this is serif, this is serif right? It's got the little doohickeys, you know, the doohickeys. Anyway, really small font. I found, I tested a whole bunch of fonts when I was prepping to print UJT and I just found that serif fonts are easier to read when they're small. I don't know why. Something about maybe making the letters more easy to, I don't know, easy to see. I have no idea. Okay, let's get into this. Ooh, is this, it's not, it's like thicker than I was expecting. Like the cardstock is thicker. Okay, so we have a title card here. Okay, wait, we got cups on the bottom. Hold on, y'all. Am I neurotic? Yes, yes I am. But let's just get through real quick. We're gonna look at these, but I just wanna like put them in the order I'm used to because I'm, I'm a weirdo and I have to do that. Okay, so kings, yeah, here it is. Look, they're not, first of all, they're not cows, they're horses. And second of all, horse energy makes so much sense for the Ace of Wands. So like, it's just, it's not the same. Okay, so we have wands. Okay, wands. Then we have swords, cups. Okay, there, now it's in the order that I like. These do seem quite thick, so, and it's a it's a chunky deck. So let's see, for example, we have the Chibi Tarot right here. Quite a bit wider. Look at these backs. We got the little scarab down here on the bottom. I dig it. I love that little pop of color right here. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to get into this. Okay, I wanna do a full, full video, so I'm gonna try not to get into details, but let's just look at a few of the cards. I think this is really smart. This to me reminds me a, like a lot of what I kind of need in collage. Like when I think of collage decks, I need them to sort of have enough structure for me personally. I don't know how else to say that. So I'm just gonna leave it there. I'm just gonna show a few cards and then tell me below, do you want a full walkthrough? Cause I'd really like to dive into this. And I have thoughts, I have so many thoughts. So keep me posted if you would like to see that. And that'll just help me prioritize. I think I'm gonna wanna do Magical Creatures. I think I wanna do this one. Oh my gosh, okay. So we took a little quick preview. It is gilded. This is an indie deck. I will have links to everything I'm mentioning down below. So if you've seen enough and you're like, yes, totally up my alley, you will see the info down below. Otherwise, keep an eye out and I will hopefully get a video out on this one soonish. But oh, this is just, it's so lush. This feels like it's such an experience. Some some decks you open and you're like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be like a whole adventure, a whole experience, and this just feels like that. So that's very exciting. I also purchased, okay, let me see if I can find the comment. Hold on. Let's go to, let's see, go to 
comments. Okay, listen, I cannot, I've tried. I cannot find the comment of whoever suggested that I take a look at this, but this was not even on my radar. This is the Old Style Tarot by Alexander Ray. This one was not on my radar, but somebody commented, I wish I could remember who, and I would totally credit you. And so thank you if you left that comment, but they just commented that they really liked this deck. And I looked it up because I was like, old style tarot, what the heck? And then I went looking and I was like, hey, I really like this. It's got a very specific flavor that I'm just really drawn to at the moment, but we have a really thorough guidebook. Now, Alexander Ray has the old style Lenormand, which some of you may be familiar with. I was tempted to pick that up too, but I stopped myself because again, like I said, it's I don't need to collect a ton, a ton of Lenormand decks because frankly, I don't need that many. <laughs> But this was really, this just really caught my eyes having a particular flavor and it just looks really beautiful. It just seems like something would be really great to have out on the table for client work, for example. There's something about it that just feels really elegant. So this is what the backings look like. It's US Games. So I did order it in from amazon.com, like the US Amazon, because I could not find it on the Canadian Amazon. So I feel like this is very much a Rider Waite Smith clone, but it has this antiqued, medieval kind of quality to it. I don't know if medieval is even right. It feels like, I know what I'm thinking. It feels, yeah, like maybe here, maybe this is what it is. Like around the time, y'all, I'm not a history buff, okay? But around the time maybe of the Roman Empire, maybe a little bit sooner than that. I don't know, but that's the vibe. It's got just a very particular vibe. It feels very elegant. I've said elegant already. It almost has in some of these cards, just a it's kind of got a romantic quality to it. And I was really just drawn to the imagery. I really loved the aces. Here's the ace of wands. I love that it's holding up like this sprout here. It just feels like it's out of time. Like it's out of a particular period of time. And I was just really drawn. Also, I think I, I could be wrong, but some of these characters and their images remind me of, and I don't know if these are redrawn and inspired by those images, but they some of them remind me of the... I'll show you when I get to the Page of Cups, but they remind me of some of the same, what are they called that Danny used for Mystic Masters? The the etchings, what are they called? She's gonna kill me, I can't remember what they're called. Some of them remind me like of that time period or like these could have been in old manuscripts. I love this for the Seven of Cups, like a lot. The Nine of Cups annoys me because it's very much financial, but I can get over it, I suppose. We'll see, we'll see, we'll actually see if I can get over it. I say that I can get over it, but this is one that sometimes gets to me. Nine of Cups to me is not about material abundance, but again, that's a personal, that's my personal take on the card. There are plenty of people who see it that way, but I'm just not, I'm just not one of them. I think the Nine of Pentacles is this. Yeah, so, and even in the guidebook, it talks about like money and financial abundance. And I'm like, no, it's about, it's about inner fulfillment, emotional fulfillment. But again, that's just my personal take. And there's plenty of people that see it differently. There it is. Because as soon as I saw this, I was like, oh my God, it's Big Booty Judy, <laughs> which I'm pretty sure is what Danny calls one of the characters. And oh my God, I can't, I have to show you. Hold on. Okay. I grabbed Mystic Masters. <laughs> this was the card I was thinking of. This is a much bigger Booty Judy than this, than this character for sure. What are these called? Y'all, she's going to kill me. <laughs> I can't remember. Anyways, this immediately, I just immediately went, that's big booty, Judy. And it's not even that big of a booty. I just, I don't know why, but it just, it reminded me of that. It made me smile. And that's the page of cups. So that was, that was a fun little, little Easter egg. I really like what's happening in these cards a lot. So yeah, this is the old style tarot. I just, it's got, it feels kind of like it's full of like, I don't know, angelic beings almost in places. I'd be curious if you have this, what you think of it, how does it read for you? Because I feel like it's gonna read like a classic, you know, like a classic Rider Waite Smith, but it just takes you somewhere. It takes you to a time, it takes you to a place. And I love that. I don't know why there's just a random blank card. That's kind of silly to me, but you know, hey, you can write in it, you can make it something, you can make it a significator. But cardstock's really nice. It's not linen, but it's that, I don't know how it's gonna be to shuffle. You know what, let's freaking shuffle it. I don't think I'm gonna do a full walkthrough of this one necessarily. If there's a lot of demand, I will. But I, can, I think I can mess up the order. Let's just give it a shuffle and see if it fits. I don't think it's that stiff. Oh, it's a little stiff, but it's not terribly stiff. There's been a couple of US Games decks that have felt really stiff. This one, well, no, I feel like I can, I feel like for some people it's gonna feel, it's gonna feel a little stiff. Love that new card smell though. Oh my gosh, it smells good. Okay, anyway, that is the old style tarot. I'm gonna have to find an appropriate bag 
for that because I don't want to keep it in this giant box. I don't think like the book. Okay, so I don't think the book is one that I'm going to like need as a ride or die, if that makes sense. Like, I think I can read this deck without the book. So I'll probably just get like a, like a simple drawstring bag for that. But so we have in, just so you know what's in the guidebook, you do get an upright meaning, you get an advice, me, uh, advice, like cards advice, a reversed meaning, a warning, and then a quick answer. So the quick answer seems to be very, very straightforward, simple, snappy. So if you're just doing quick readings, for example, the two of swords is hidden problems are ready to appear in... Queen of Swords, oh, let's see, Queen of Swords, quick meaning or quick answer is, it depends on what on what you choose, self-control or destruction. It seems to be a lot of them are like yes or no type answers. It's difficult to speak about the result when you're just beginning your path. All your plans will work out the way you'd hoped. Yes, your wish will definitely come true. I don't use meanings like that that are that like definitive and like yes or no based. So for me, that's not gonna be a big deal, but I know there's some people that are gonna really, really like that. So I wanted to point that out. But this is really fun. Again, it's a US games deck, but I just thought it was pretty. And it's it kind of feels fancy. You know, if you're looking for a deck kind of like, I don't know, Pagan, Pagan Other Worlds or a deck with that kind of vibe, but you want something that's mass market, I feel like this could be a really good option for you. But I'm excited. I really liked it. Let me put Mystic Masters away. This is a deck that I do keep in the tuck box because my bestie designed this tuck box. And like, I just think it's so cool with all the paint splatters all over it. Plus I've broken the tuck box in a bit, which is probably half my problem, but I also keep this in my special tarot box. So, all right, let's look at something else. So this one was just a little piece of Happy Mail and I'm gonna show a few pieces of it. There was a, a handwritten note in here, but I just wanted to show some of the goodies that came in here. This was just something fun that showed up in my PO box and I thought it was super sweet and it totally made my week. So I just wanna show. There's just, it's just some fun stationary things. So look, there's some really sweet, look at these stickers. These are so pretty. They're like moons and planets, but they've got all these like sparkly stars and gold accents on that page. These feel like washi stickers. If you've ever felt washi stickers are super thin and just really lovely. So those are nice. And these are just some really cool, these, these pop, oh, it's already out. Look at that. They're like star charts. I'm gonna pop these out actually, that's really fun. These feel like things you can like glue in to your planner or whatever, look at this. But also look at this, now I have these, but I also have like little frames. How fun is this? I'm gonna put this with my, my journaling paraphernalia, super fun. And then in this little envelope was, look at this, Mystic. It's like a sticker that she cut out that said Mystic. And I love this, I'm a damn unicorn. This feels like a vinyl sticker. Look at, I got it on here. Look at how good that looks. Oh, it's she's so pretty. This is like a motivational planner. I get into here literally, I haven't filled out a lot in here, but I get into here when I'm having a day, you know, when I'm feeling overcommitted or overwhelmed or whatever. And one thing I have done before is I've taken pictures of some of the worksheets in here and then I'll do them on my digital planner so that I don't like use them up, which is silly. I should just start using this thing up and really getting in here because this is fantastic. If you've never seen this, by the way, this is called The Anti-Planner. It's by Danny Donovan. I'll try to remember to link it down below because it's really freaking cool. How neat is that? Anyways, this came with a really, really lovely note, a really lovely card. I'm gonna tuck these things in here so I don't lose them and then put them back in this very brightly colored envelope everything came in. I just thought that was fun and I just wanted to share it. So thanks for, thanks for hanging out with me while I did all that. Last but not least, I have an entire show and tell for you on things by Eric Mail. Now, if you don't know who Eric is, Eric is the creator of the Inkwitch Tarot. This is a freaking fabulous deck with that had a bunch of expansions and it's freaking amazing and we love it. This is the Inkwitch Tarot. It has these backings. Love this deck so much. And it's funny because I'm not often a muted tones kind of gal, but there's something about Eric's work that I just genuinely really, really love. So this is the Ink Witch Tarot. This is the second edition. I did a video on this, but Eric sent me some new things and we're going to talk about it. So first off, we're going to open these things together. Eric sent me a copy of the Endless Oracle. So let's get into this because I definitely want to show you this. And again, as with the others, let me know what you want to see a dedicated video on. So I think this, some of this stuff would be really fun to do a full, full video on. Okay. See, so Endless Oracle, this one is available now. Eric does, by the way, a really, really great job 
with the guidebooks. So make sure, my opinion, if you get one of Eric's decks, I think it's well worth it to get the guidebook. The write-ups are really, really good. There's usually some really, really good stuff in here. Now, as I understand it, the Endless Oracle is kind of meant to be one of these decks where you can put the cards together. That's why it's called Endless. And you have a cohesive scene. So it kind of all blends. It all matches up which I can only imagine as a deck creator what a pain this was to do. But this is, I'm gonna, I wanna show you the cards now that I've shown you kind of how it works. Here's what the backings look like. Uh, Eric uses this really smooth, this feels like his Inkwitch Tarot. It's a very smooth, classic kind of card stock. So that's what the backings look like. It's not edged, but it's very smooth and uh, snappy like a playing card type of card stock. So we have Archway and Bard, Birds, Bridge, Butterfly. These are in alphabetical order, which I approve of the cohort, the cottage in the woods, the crossroads, the diplomat, the fields, the giants, the healer. Oh, interesting. The lighthouse, lightning striking. We'll take a quick look at the guidebooks. You get a five for the write-ups in the deck too. The procession, the ships. <gasps> There's a unicorn card. Oh, I remember giving Eric so much crap about the Inkwitch Tarot because something bad happened to unicorns, I think, in, in at least one of the cards. And I was like, who hurt you? So this makes me really happy, actually. And then we have a little thank you card as well in there. Okay, this is great. And there is an expansion. It's called the Triforce expansion. Now, Triforce, isn't that like a Zelda thing? Y'all, I'm really bad. I, I, I played a Zelda kid, as a Zelda kid. I played a Zelda game when I was a kid, at least one. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, yeah, so there's like a little fold out thing that talks about it. The hero, so there's just some extra cards in here. Okay, okay, okay. Let's take a look at it. It is, it's totally Zelda. Oh my God, this this is great. Okay, I need to get into here. Let me use my little seam ripper just to separate the, the plastic. You know, we love a good expansion pack. Okay, so we have the hero, the demon king, the princess, the artist, the fortune teller, and the patron out of that. And these feel like they're gonna all shuffle together quite nicely. And the backs are all a perfect match as well. So I'm just gonna give this a little shuffle. And then we'll pull a card and I'll read the guidebook entry. If it's one of the Triforce, it might not be a good example because I don't know that there's as in-depth of write-ups on those. We'll see, we'll see in a minute. But as I said, I'll have a link below where you can get Eric's decks because I think Eric does a really good job. So let's see. Let's give it another little boop, boop, boop. And then we will see. Okay. So we have the Zenith. Okay. I'm just going to, yeah, these have like a pretty decent length write-up for the little Triforce one. So this one I'm just going to tuck in like that. And then let's look at the Zenith. Wait a minute. These are also, these are the additional cards. Oh, this was a Patreon. Okay, so wait, wait, wait. The tri sorry, I'm being distracted. Uh, Zenith is here. But the additional cards are also in this big guidebook. The artist, the fortune teller, the patron. Oh, those specific ones are. Okay, so these were actually a little bonus for Patreon, for Eric's Patreon. Oh, that's really cool. Oh, well, thank you, Eric, for sending that to me. That's very sweet. So anyways, let's read about the Zenith. Okay. And by the way, the 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 bonus cards were the artist, the fortune teller, and the, and the patron. Oops, excuse me. But in Triforce, we also have the hero, the demon king, and the princess. So these three are specific to the Triforce. So I will still keep this in here. I don't see these entries included here. Anyway, so for the Zenith, so we have some keywords. So apotheosis, culmination, coming full circle, success, and apex. You are on top of the world. Things are coming full circle, reaching their greatest peak. Soaring heights can often feel frightening, but only because we are at a point where we're looking down and feeling afraid to fall. Z the zenith may often feel like an ending where everything has reached a state of completion. Goals might be accomplished or a sequence of events may have culminated toward a climax. It may be time to consider what is next. Ask ourselves how we can lift up those around us now that we've become more experienced ourselves. In larger readings, imagine yourself standing at the peak of the zenith. If you looked out from this vantage, what would you see beneath you? What obstacles have you overcome? 
come to reach this place and what help has been offered to you along the way? Do you feel satisfied or is something still missing? Is it okay to reach a high point or ending and make the choice to go back and satisfy needs that may be left unfulfilled? Or if you do feel satisfied, look for people whom you can now help but benefit from your own successes. And then it says, in the sky, Zenith, the highest point directly above a specific location. In astrology, it is called the medium coli and it is associated with achievements. Oh, very cool. And then we have some creative notes. So it looks like all of the card entries do have this bit about enlarger readings. And what's interesting about that is it's kind of a mechanic. So let's actually, let me just show you what I, what I think I'm noticing about this. So if you have like, let's say you have three cards and maybe you have, oh, I love that we've got some moon phases showing up too. That's very, very cool. And then maybe I have a couple, oh, not the thank you card. I shuffled that in. Okay. Maybe you have a couple underneath like that scooch everything up. Now, when I'm looking at this, then when I'm looking at the write-ups, right? So like maybe I look at the goddess and let's see what she says about the enlarger readings. Cause I think it's a mechanic to kind of help you navigate how to read this based on its position to the cards around it. So the goddess, enlarger re readings, ask yourself what role the goddess plays in the world. It may indicate a need to lean on your spiritual practices and beliefs, but it can also warn us of religious dogma and those of us who use religion to manipulate others. How do events play out around the goddess? What are the intentions of her followers? So then I could look at this and go, oh, who, who's her followers? Oh, it might be the giants. So then I'm gonna go over to the giants. Hopefully you're picking up what I'm putting down, right? I'm gonna go to the giants and it says in larger readings, notice if there are figures who acknowledge the giants. Well, the goddess is acknowledging the giants. That's interesting. They may fear that which they don't understand, embrace it or be spurred to action by it. Now, this is interesting because she was just, we were just talking about the goddess and seeing like who are her followers and how are they behaving? Well, it says here that they might fear what they don't understand. So there might be this like clash between these two cards and their energies, right? So there's a real interesting mechanic here where Eric gives you a meaning for each individual card, but then also tells you how to how to interpret this card in the context of everything else that's around it and how to sort of like connect things. And that's really a unique mechanic in decks. In fact, the only other deck I know of that does this, I think pretty successfully, is the the Citadel's special edition bonus deck, which is called Deck of Emblems, I believe. And in the Deck of Emblems, you get those mechanics. Like if this is between another card, like look at what's around it. It gives you directions on kind of how to incorporate based on what's also in the reading. So I find that really, really interesting. I really wanna play with this more, but I've got more decks to show. So this is the Endless Oracle by Eric Mail. And again, it's meant to really create, it's meant to build a story. And that's really interesting because when you are doing that, gosh, for creative writing, this would be so cool. This would be so cool in creative writing because you could literally tell a story. We have the ship, the dark figure, the lighthouse, the fortune teller, hello, oh my God. Like stories are already coming to mind in my head. Oh, this is cool. This would be a really, really good creative writing prompt deck. The gathering clouds, the birds, the distant walled city. Oh my gosh, okay, sorry, that makes me really excited. So let me pop this in its box and set it aside for now. Let me put the thank you card on. Oh, you know what I usually do with these? I usually put them under the ribbon. So let's just do that. That way I don't accidentally shuffle it in again. All right. So that is the Endless Oracle and its book. Okay, then the next thing Eric sent me is the Paper Oracle. Now I believe this is a Lenormand. Yes, a guidebook for the Lenormand deck by Eric Mail. There's two Lenormand decks in this in this recent deck roundup. That is unusual for me. So, but also highly relevant given that I'm doing a Lenormand series. I cannot wait to see this. Okay, Eric. What did you do? I, I feel like I didn't really follow this. I must have seen this on Dawn's channel because I know Dawn has shared Eric's stuff before. Ooh, I love this pattern on the back. It's obviously what's on the box and on the book as well. This is called the Paper Oracle. Okay, I love that it tells us what the card is. Please, thank you for not making us guess. <laughs> Sometimes you just have a number and I'm like, oh, I know the numbers, but also like, oh, this is so pretty. This is so pretty. So we have the writer, the clover, the ship, the house. I love Eric's art style. It's so sketchy and soft. Ooh, I really like this. Okay. Knife. Why am I not remembering what card 10 is? Hold on. We're going to look at, we're going to look at bunny kisses real quick because I am spacing. Oh, scythe. Knife instead of scythe. Right, 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 right. Okay. That makes sense. I do prefer, I will say, I do prefer when creators stick to the traditional 
the traditional names of the main cards. I don't mind if they mess with like the person cards, but the main cards, because sometimes it can be, in a, if you're trying to do quick, quick, snappy readings and you know this card is the scythe card, it can throw you if you're like, like it just did me, what's the knife? But it's obvious, like it's something that cuts. It should be, to me, it should be obvious. But again, I'm still a forever noob when it comes to Lenormand. We have the broom, birds. Oh, I love this. Fox, bear, stars, stork familiar. This doesn't have, if it matters to you, this doesn't have the playing card associations. I don't find myself really looking at the playing card associations, so I'm not too bothered by it. I love this depiction of the mountain card because the mountain card is often about obstacles, and here we've got somebody who's like really burdened by those obstacles. Crossroads. We do have two paths. Love that. Mice. Heart. Ring. Interesting depiction for the ring, but again, it tells us, so I don't have to guess. Book letter. Oh, I love this. The masculine and the feminine. That's fun. I love that. This is going to work really well in my personal practice. The sun, the moon. Oh, I'm obsessed with this. The key, the fish. I love this. The cross is the Celtic cross. Now that's interesting because typically, oh, and then we also have a non-binary. Oh, nice. Okay. So there's a masculine, feminine, and non-binary. That's amazing. I love that. Okay. So the cross, I need to see what Eric says about the cross because I typically see the cross as a burden in Lenormand. And I'm curious what Eric says about this. Oh, here we go. The cross. The cross is one of the oldest and most widely used symbols in the world. Da, 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 da. Okay. So spiritual, spirituality, religion, duty, responsibility, burden, pain, sacrifice. So Eric says, cross often shares a close tie with the symbol of a crucifix and can represent pain, burdens, and sacrifice. More than that, however, the cross is a symbol of responsibility and destiny. The image on this card is of a Celtic cross tarot reading with all the cards still laying face down. This symbol represents fate and spirituality, but also reminds us that these things are often in interconnected. I really love that. That's really clever. And it also gets you away from that icon iconography if that iconography is troublesome to you. So I like that too. The non-binary. Okay, then we have some extras. We have the hourglass, which I love, a representation of time. The cauldron, I love this too. The storm, the scales, the stranger, interesting. And the wheel. And this reminds me of like fate and such. I like these extra cards. A lot of times with Lenormand, I'm like, you're messing with my system and I'm new enough that it can throw me. But I really like these archetypes. So we have time. I feel like cauldron for me would be about transformation. Storm would be about things outside your control. Scales. We have that sense of accountability and justice. The stranger. I love that. And the wheel. Oh, this is really good. Okay. Oh my gosh. And look, if you think about it. Okay. So Bunny Kisses Lenormand and Eric's Lenormand. Let's just do a quick little side by side. Look at this. They both have this lovely, like soft. Look at this. This lovely, soft hand-drawn, hand-painted, sketchy quality that is just so delightful. These are both really, really sweet. I love these. Yeah, fun, 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 fun. I think I probably gravitate just a bit more towards the paper, the paper oracle, um, but man, these are both really good. Okay, so two new Lenormand decks into my collection. Can't say I'm mad about it. Really, really like this one. I tend to put these into Peggy pouches but she hasn't had minis for a bit. And I know she's, she said those don't, those don't go very fast in the shop. I'm like, but they're the perfect size for decks like this. I'll show you what I mean. Like if I can get one without dropping stuff. Hold these. Okay. Like this, right? These are Peggy's mini pocket pouches. I'm trying to talk her into still making them for the shop. This is my cute little Lenormand. But if I take Eric's out of its box here, like, it's just the perfect size. Look at it. It's just the perfect size for Lenormand's. Oh, my goodness. So I got to get her to make me some at least. Everybody go hound Peggy. Tell her to make more mini pouches. <laughs> I do have a fun Peggy update actually coming too. So stay tuned because there's a fun new thing that she's doing that I want to show y'all. Anyways, let me put, I'm making a big mess here. I always do. Okay, so the paper oracle, very exciting. Okay, this next one, y'all. This next one. I'm gonna have to make a dedicated video on this next one for sure, but I have to show you right freaking now. Eric's been teasing this and this was totally a secret, but this is Eric's newest deck. It's called the True Sight Oracle and it's coming to Kickstarter very, very soon. So a little bit of information. Oof. Okay, Eric is hoping to launch this deck October 1st. He's hoping for the Kickstarter campaign to run from October 1st to October 31st. So it's coming real soon and you will have a chance to scoop it up on Kickstarter. Y'all, 
When Eric told me about this deck, I about lost my mind. So it is all sketchy black and white, but it is very much based on tabletop role-playing games. And Eric actually started getting inspired to work on this Oracle after playing Baldur's Gate 3. So you know, listen, if you know, you know, I am obsessed. So here we have the tuck box. As always, remember this is a prototype. So changes might be made for the final version, always really important to keep in mind. So there's a separate guidebook, but then when you open up the tuck box, at least in this prototype version, there is a little open up pamphlet that has, it looks like keywords for every card. It talks about also how to use this if you wanna use it in a role playing campaign and how to use it as an Oracle deck. Oh my gosh. <laughs> now, if you are familiar with, with like tabletop role playing mechanics, I feel like this is gonna really float your boat. It's actually substantial. I thought it was gonna be way fewer cards than this. This is super exciting. We're gonna take a look at a few. We have acrobatics, bardic inspiration, combat, disengage, initiative. Oh my gosh. Long rest, natural one. Natural 20, perception, ritual cast, <gasps> sleight of hand, strength, I'm obsessed, survival, true sight. Okay, listen, I know that I'm not normally a black and white girly, but you're gonna give me a deck full of words that I understand because of playing hours and hours and hours and hours of Baldur's Gate 3, yes please. So I will do a dedicated video going through this in much more detail, but let's take a quick look at the guidebook. So for every card you get, a description of the card and what it means, and you also get an in-game effect, which is really exciting. And that also, that in-game effect description will be really helpful with intuitively like understanding how to apply the card as well. So for example, let's take one simple. Dash, momentum and forward movement. So you're moving forward and moving quickly. Let me, let me pull out the dash card so we can actually look at it while I'm talking about it. These are alphabetical, right? Yeah, dash. Okay, so here's the dash card. You have these feet dashing across. So it says, you're moving fast and moving quickly. This card suggests a burst of speed and it may be of a literal or figurative nature. You may find yourself covering great distances in a project or traveling to a new place. Take time to assess the road before you and harness this incredible momentum while it's available to you. The in-game effect is activates when dashing in combat. It says until their next long rest, the player with this card may dash as a bonus action rather than an action in, in combat. If another ability or effect already allowed them to dash as a bonus action, this card's effect backfires and instead they are no longer able to dash as a bonus action until their next long rest. So if you are a gamer, there's gonna be some gaming uses for this deck, but regardless, I feel like, now I'm normally one where I need a lot to go off of. I want a lot of imagery, I want a good powerful keyword, but these keywords actually make a lot of sense to me and give me a lot of room to play because of how familiar I am with these words and concepts through. Look at this, this looks so much like, look, doesn't this look a lot like the graph? It's different, for sure it's different, but it reminds me of the graph that Don and I put together for our dice casting system. I love that. Difficult terrain, oh my God, okay, 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 okay. I am really excited about this. I will definitely make a full video about that. So I've kind of make a little pile of decks that I for sure wanna do a full video. And obviously I do wanna hear from you too so that I know which to prioritize and put first. So keep me posted on what you wanna see more about. But again, the True Side Oracle by Eric is gonna be coming to Kickstarter ideally by October 1st. So keep your eyes out. Look at this like freaking door and dungeon. I think this is actually the dungeon card. Hold on, I gotta see. I'm pretty sure it is though. Hold on, let's see. We're still in order. Is it, is it dungeon? Is it dungeon? Is it dungeon? Ah, it's dungeons. I thought so. Okay, sorry. I, I just, I'm, I'm a child. I, I, have to, I have to look. Okay, and then lastly, I have to show you a fun new thing. In fact, it's probably what this deck is going to live in that Peggy just gave me. And it's an update for the shop because she's making more of these for her shop. So let me show you. So some of you are familiar with Peggy's classic drawstring bags. And she's been making these for forever and ever and ever. And this is typically what I will put like my Llewellyn decks in is these kinds of bags. And this is a size small. So it's, it's really sized for like Llewellyn. And then her standard bags, which is her like classic flagship bag. Let me show you one of those. Just, just for context, this is like a, a, a standard bag. So this is more for like an indie deck because I could take my, my, where did it go? Hello? Oh yeah, <laughs> I could take my Unicorn's Journey Tarot. In fact, that's why I have this bag here. And I can, I can put an indie deck in its box in a standard bag, but these smalls are more designed for like a, a classic or Llewellyn sized basic, not nothing too crazy chunky, but a classic tarot deck 
fits perfect in Peggy Small. Anyway, the reason I'm telling you that is because she also makes these kind of bags. So as you can see, the size is similar, but this is an envelope style bag. And we also created these to, like I was the one being, being like, these are the sizes we need. Um, but this is also sized to fit quite comfortably a classic tarot deck such as a Llewellyn or a like basic standard tarot size, right? Anything not too terribly chunky. These are sized and they have like an elastic closure. So Peggy's been making these for forever as well. Not quite as long as the drawstrings, but she has these two types that she makes. Anyway, she's been getting more creative. This is actually one that is going up in the shop, by the way, but she is getting creative and she made this and I like immediately stole it. And she made, oh my gosh, I gotta show, she made quilted, look at these. She made quilted pouches and I am obsessed. So these two are the first two that she made and these are prototypes where she was just starting to play around with the idea. They're the exact same size. Let me just show you here again. They're the exact same size. They do, as you can see here, they do because they're, they've got all these different pieces of fabric built in. They are ever so slightly thicker. You can see that, right? They're gonna have a, a, much, a little bit of a thicker feel inside. Anyway, these were the prototypes and then she slightly perfected it. <gasps> and this is the one that I am legitimately obsessed with. So this is the one that my True Sight Oracle is gonna go in, actually. It's such a perfect fit. I'm gonna take it out of its box, but I still have to do the walkthrough. I am like beside myself. I literally stole the first one. She's in, in, in her sewing area right now making more of these. So this one is mine and it has a padding in it. Like it's thicker, it's even thicker. So just to show you, for example, here is the classic, right? This has a bit of sturdiness and structure to it, but this is a classic. This is the prototype, which is just a bit thicker. And then this, you can see how it's like, it's squishier. It's got a little bit more um, padding in it. But I also really loved the way that she pieced together the with this like angling. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. So anyways, she's now making these. Now these are gonna be going up this type. This one here is her perfected design. So this one's gonna be going up in her, not this one, this one is mine, you can't have it. <laughs> this one, this specific one is mine. But more like this one, this is the final design, more like this one are going to be going up in her shop. And just so you know, I take her product photos, okay? When we do the product photos for these and when we do the listings for these, she does the listings, I just take the pictures. She's going to make sure that each one of these has its own listing. So if you see these in her shop and they're gonna hopefully be going up probably by, I would say middle of the week, probably in a couple of days if they're not up already. They will be one of a kind. Obviously each one has its own combination of fabrics. So they will each get their own listing. They'll each get their own photo. So you'll what you see is what you'll be able to buy, obviously. They are more time consuming, obviously, than something that just uses like a single type of fabric on the outside, right? They're, they're lined, all the seams are enclosed, the usual stuff. The only real difference for those of you who are familiar with Peggy's work that you might immediately notice is that instead of the like decorative stitching, I don't know if you can see that on here. See how she does these decorative stitches on her stuff? Instead of the decorative stitching, she did do a straight stitch. Look how close, look how straight her stitches are. Crazy to me, anyways. So instead of the decorative stitching, you do have a straight stitch, mostly because there's so many layers here, right? So wants to make sure that everything is really secure and solid. So that is the only real difference is it's a straight stitch instead of a decorative stitch, but oh my gosh, look at this. Isn't this beautiful? So anyways, that's where my true sight's going. <laughs> But the good news for you guys, other than just keeping an eye out on the shop because these are amazing, the good news for you guys is that these two, these first two prototypes, I've got, where'd the other one go? Yeah, these first two, where she was just playing around with the idea, I'm gonna give these away. So I'm gonna be picking two winners and I will just randomly pick and I will randomly bag them up. So if you win, you'll get one of these two. I don't know which, I'm not gonna like draw one name for this one and then, you know what I mean? I'm just gonna draw two names. And <laughs> that's how I'm gonna do it. So if you are interested in winning, let me get this out of the way and put my, put my everyday witch tarot away. If you are interested in entering the giveaway for one of these, let me think of a good keyword to use. Use the word Peggy bag, P-E-G-G, Y, B A G, all one word. So P E G G Y B A G, all one word. Use that word somewhere in your comment. No hashtag, nothing fancy. It can be anywhere in your comment. 
please don't use any words that people might search when they're looking for these kinds of things to happen <laughs> because this will make it a little bit more fair or more, it'll tip the odds in the favor of those of you who already watch and subscribe and hang out here. A uh, couple simple rules and terms and conditions, that sort of thing. I have to be able to legally ship to you, but I ship worldwide, so no problem that way. You have to be 18 and over. This is not affiliated with YouTube in any way, shape, or form. And please be subscribed, just like as a favor. <laughs> please be subscribed and like this video. Those are just like little things you can do. I can't check, y'all. It's an honor system, but like it would be nice. <laughs> Anyways, so we will be sending these out. I will try to remember to draw a name in the next week or two. If you don't see it happen, somebody nudge me. I'm not offended if you nudge me. I'm very busy. So please feel free to check in and nudge me. These two though will be given away. This one I am keeping, but keep an eye out on the shop for more of these quilted po pocket pouches to enter the shop. I don't know if she's going to be making them in both small and standard, but I think if y'all like them, she probably will. So the standard pocket pouches, just like the standard bags, are meant to hold chunkier decks. They, they wouldn't hold a deck like in its box necessarily, but they would hold a deck like say this one, the Magical Creatures Tarot that's quite chunky and has a bunch of extra cards, would probably go better in a standard than the small. The smalls is really great for classic tuck box, standard tarot decks, that kind of thing. Anyway, I'm babbling, but keep an eye out for this to be posted. I usually post the announcement in my community tab. So if you're subscribed, you'll see the announcement. Make sure you keep an eye on that to watch for the announcement about these. And also these are gonna also go up into the shop in case you're looking for more of the classic style. This one's got sparkly accents on it. These like ladybugs are so cute. So there's two of these, one of these going up in the shop. I don't think Peggy's gonna be making these little micro bags anymore, these little teeny ones. These are really great for the little teeny, teeny, tiny mini decks. But this one is going up in the shop in a day or two. So keep an eye out for that. But yeah, so we will keep you posted about this, but mine is my true sight and it's staying with me. I apologize, but that is just how it is. So let's have a little recap, shall we? We have the true sight paper. Oh, I, know, I blew out my candle, but that's okay. We need the real estate. <laughs> we have a true sight paper and endless oracles from Eric, which is amazing. Love to see it. How do I organize all of this? We'll just do like, I guess like that. Sure. And then we have the old style tarot. I'll put this one over here. We have Scarab and Dolly. We have Bunny Kisses. We have Chibi. And we have the Magical Creatures. 